Hello everybody, welcome to Boxing Science. This video is sponsored by Soccer Fitness. Today we're going to be covering the top 10 rotational exercises for boxing. This is particularly going to be focusing on rotational mobility, as this is the foundation to improve rotational performance. In other videos that we've posted on the YouTube channel, we've been focusing on rotational strength and power for boxing. If you're wanting to watch this video, please visit the link in the description where we've got a range of different core exercises and medicine ball throw to really power up your rotation. Now it's really important that we focus on rotational mobility first because if we don't get the mobility right, this will affect our performance in basically rotational strength and power. We want to be utilizing the correct muscle groups to contribute to this rotational power and not wanting to compensate by using the lower back or using the anterior shoulder muscles. So developing rotational mobility is vital and something that we focus on in every single session down here at the Boxing Science Performance Center. Rotational mobility covers three different sections and today I'm gonna to take you through these three different sections as well as showing you some exercise demonstrations for that fit into each section. The first one is thoracic rotation. So improving the amount of rotation that we get from the thoracic spine. So this is towards the top end of the back and wanting to try and improve rotation through basically the upper back and the shoulders. Now the reason why we want to try and improve this is because boxers are quite anterior dominant in terms of the shoulders, punching high volume, so they end up being quite tight here, which will affect thoracic rotation. When throwing a punch, we want to improve thoracic rotation to increase the range of straight shots and also to increase the rotational power into our bent arm shots. Well, let's talk about straight shots for now, where if we increase our thoracic rotation, we're able to get more range on the punch, which means at this range here, we'll be able to produce more power. So it's increasing that length tension relationship, something that we mention quite often across the YouTube channel and on our membership. If our thoracic rotation isn't as efficient, we'll start compensating by either using the lower back to start compensating using the spine, lean over that front foot, getting into a non-advantageous position, or more commonly, start to side bend and start utilizing a muscle that we call the QL muscle, which is quadratus lumborum and that ends up being quite tight. So that's why a lot of boxers end up getting quite tight and so low backs. So we're wanting to try and increase that thoracic rotation range. And we can do this in a range of different exercises, eagles, windmills, seated rotations, quadruple rotations, something that we utilize into more or less every single um, boxing science session. So let's have a look at these exercises before we move on to the next section. Okay, so we're gonna take Tommy through some thoracic mobility drills. Uh, Tommy, I just want you to start off laying on your side uh, towards the camera, and we're gonna do eagles. This is, a session, this is the first exercise that we do every single workout. And we're basically going to rotate the upper body whilst raising the knee at the same time. Eyes follow the hands, knee up to 90 degrees, and trying to get that shoulder to the floor. In an ideal world, which we don't live in, uh, we want the knee and the shoulder to hit the floor. But most boxers, because they're quite tight through thoracic rotation, won't be able to do this. If anything, I want that back shoulder to hit the floor and this knee just off it. Eyes follow the hands. Arm stays linked with the upper body all the way through. And we're gonna perform eight reps on each side. Now what you're seeing with Tommy here is that he's getting a lot of rotation through the trunk. Remember what we're saying, we want to try and optimize the rotation through the upper back. So what we're going to do, we're going to fix him in by doing our next exercise, which is called windmills. We're going to have leg at 90 degrees. You're going to hold your hand on top of the knee and we're going to pop the arm in front and we're going to rotate as much as we can, Tommy, on this one. And all the way through. So a big circle above the head. Now you can still see that Tommy's getting a lot of rotation through the trunk and a bit of extension through the spine there. And this is what boxers will tend to do because they're quite tight through thoracic. So I'm gonna just lock my hand into the rib cage and just focus on rotation through this upper part of the back. So Tommy's reaching over, locking in this trunk and you can see that it's quite limited in his rotation now, but we're targeting thoracic rotation 
with the upper back. Next exercise is quadruped rotations. So we're going to get on all fours, on the knees, hands just underneath the shoulders, and we're going to have one hand on the temple tummy and elbow high, on line with the shoulder, and we're going to try and rotate as much as we can on this one. So rotate, 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 rotate up, good. Again, on this one, you'll see a lot of people just try and rotate as much as they can. Again, getting extension through the spine there, getting trunk rotation. We're wanting to try and optimize this um, thoracic rotation here. So we're locking the spine there. We're just trying to rotate as much as we can through the thoracic part of the spine. And we can intensify this by doing uh, arm movements. So doing a little bit of a pre-stretch with the arm and then rotating up with the arm. We're not just flinging the arm back, making sure that the arm stays on line with the chest all the way through. So not just flinging it back behind the shoulder joint, we're keeping that hand on line with the chest as much as we can. And then the next exercise is the seated rotation. Tommy, just take a seat over here, mate. And you're gonna have hands on opposite shoulders, elbows up high, and we're gonna take a deep breath in and rotate as far as we can. Good, a deep breath in and rotate the other way. Good. So we can do this as single repetitions and we can do it just seated on the edge of the bench. Now we use a foam roller or we can use mini bands to just make sure that these knees stay in the same position. So this is not only working thoracic rotation, also working upper and lower body separation because we want to keep these hips forward all the time. Deep breath in, deep breath out, rotate. Good, and when you come back, Tommy, what I want you to do is just have your hands on the back of your shoulders. Yeah, come back into the center first. Hands on back of your shoulders. Uh, sorry, hands on the back of the head. So then this will intensify the stretch through uh, the thoracic part of the back, okay? You should feel that in the back of your shoulders a bit more, Tommy, yeah? Good. And you can do partner-assisted so, or coach-assisted. So have the elbows up. What we're going to do, Tommy, we're going to pull you into that rotation. And we're going to do like a mini PNF stretch. So we're going to push into my elbow here. Three, two, one, relax. So deep breath in, breathe out again, and then push. And you notice that Tommy's rotated a lot more there. So we're quite restricted in that rotation. On that first rep, take that deep breath in. Deep breath out, do a little bit of PNF stretch there, working against the resistance. Deep breath in, deep breath out, and be able to get a little bit more rotation so you're optimizing this exercise. So the next section of rotational mobility is upper and lower body separation. This means trying to rotate the upper body as much as we can whilst keeping the lower body nice and stable. And the reason why this is important is because if the lower body moves as the upper body rotates, this means that we won't be sinking into our shots, sitting down onto our punches. Our legs start to move and this will affect that kind of that stretch shortening cycle of the core during combination punches and also will um, limit the amount of transfer of force through the kinetic chain. So whilst we're punching, we're wanting to produce as much force through the foot and transfer that from the lower body all the way through to the fist. So if we see like little discrepancies in movement in the lower body whilst rotating the upper body, this will lose our basically force transmission from the foot through to the fist. So we're trying to improve upper and lower body separation uh, through a range of different exercises. We use lunge and rotate and a few different variations of that. Uh, split stance, wall rotations and half kneeling rotations as well. So let's take a look at these exercises. Okay, in this next section, we're going to show you three exercises to improve upper and lower body separation. This is vital to improve trunk rotation and improve the kinetic chain sequencing. We're going to start off with a very simple lunge and rotate. You can grab a foam roller, a mini band, a weight plate, or you can just use your hands. We even use a broomstick sometimes. Tom is going to lunge out, extend his arms, and then he's going to rotate over that front leg as much as he can without moving that lower body. He's making sure that his trunk is rotation, uh, rotating. So this Boxing Science logo is on line with the firm roller all the way through the movement. I don't care whether Tommy's going to 
lunge forward. Only just rotate to there, as long as his arms and his body's in sync. What I don't want to see is his arms just flinging around there, working across his body, and he's almost cheating the movement, not optimizing that upper and lower body separation. Lunge down. So normally we just go over the front leg, but we can also go the other way and challenge the rotation that way, back up. We can also do a lateral lunge and rotate as well. This will challenge that upper and lower body separation a little bit more as the ductors have been fully stretched here. The so Tommy won't get as much rotation as he's rotating to the side there. Good work, Tommy. This next one is split stance wall rotations. Well, that's the name that I've given it anyway. Uh, Tommy's going to be in a, a, a quarter squat through the front leg, and then he's going to put his, right, uh, his rear leg into the wall. Uh, just pop back a little bit, Tommy. Yeah, don't want to be too far away from the wall. Yeah, and you want to try and put as much tension through this back leg and the foot through the floor. This is really going to be working the glute med, creating hip stability whilst rotating that trunk. So knees on line with the toe there, hands on opposite shoulders, Tommy. And we're going to try and rotate that back and that trunk as much as we can, scooping through whilst keeping this leg stable. You can see Tommy here, you're seeing a little bit of a knee shake here, but that's showing that is really activating, really pushing through the floor here. And we want to make sure that we're keeping the shoulders retracted and we're scooping through, trying to rotate that upper back as much as we can. And the glute med is really having to switch on here. Good, and we're trying to put as much force through this lead leg and as much force through the rear leg as possible. Now this translates well to boxing, especially in like lead hooks or lead uppercuts, because the hip has to be nice and stable. And then if the hip isn't as stable, this can affect the amount of kind of stretch shortening cycle effectiveness of the, of the core. It will also affect that kind of what position that we're firing from as well. This just leads us to be very tight in here to then be, be able to throw nice, fast and powerful short range shots. Uh, the next one is uh, just kneeling rotations, Tommy. So we're gonna use the foam roller against the box. So you're gonna be half kneeling. It's like it's gonna be at 90 degrees and making sure that the toe is directly underneath the knee. And he's gonna use the foam roller to just press into the, uh, into the box so he can use the wall. And he's going to rotate as much as he can through the upper body. And you notice that this leg is having to stay fixed in position to keep this foam roller stuck there. If we take that foam roller away, what will happen is that that knee will, will tend to flare out. And this is not increasing upper body and lower body separation. So keep the knee there as a cue. And you can add a little bit of a complex to this so you can do a, a roll with it. So you can rotate as much as you can and then roll on the other side. It's a fantastic one. It's working thoracic rotation, trunk rotation, and upper body and lower body separation. Fantastic exercise that we use in, with most of our boxers down here at the Boxing Size Performance Center. An important cue is to make sure that you're keeping this rib cage. You want to keep chest up, Tommy, but keep the rib cage down. You're not wanting to start compensating using lower back muscles here. So you can see Tommy's actually limited his range now through that cue there, yeah. Let's try and rotate, 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 rotate. We'll keep the rib cage down. Yeah, good. Because what we'll want to do is if we're not getting as much rotation, we'll start trying to use your back muscles there. Okay, so fantastic uh, drill. How many reps? Probably want to be doing five rotations, five rolls, and then move on to the other side. The last one, we've Really focus on upper body rotation. This is really important because wanting to improve the amount of rotation that we're getting through the upper back, the amount of rotation that we're getting through the trunk whilst keeping the lower body stable, but also we're needing to improve hip rotation as well. Hip rotation <clears throat> is obviously important to transfer that force through the kinetic chain from lower body through to the upper body. Now a lot of boxers, because they're quite tight in their hips and tight in their ankle joint, 
will struggle to get that full and optimal hip rotation and hip extension into their punches. There's lots of different ways that we can train this in a general sense, such as improving glute strength, glute med strength and activation, uh, improving hip mobility. But these are a few different ways that we can do it in a rotational sense. So doing a reach and rotate, plate rotations and banded rotate to press. So let's take a look at these exercises. Okay, this next section is looking at hip rotation for rotational mobility. You can improve hip rotation by improving hip mobility, glute strength and glute med activation. But there's certain exercises that you can use to make sure that it sinks and be able to try and increase hip rotation through punch specific action or very sport specific action to increase uh, kinetic chain sequencing. The first one is just a reach and rotate. Tommy, you're gonna stand, bilateral stance, feet hip width apart, and I want you to get into like a bit of a stance and guard position really. Uh, well, your guard position. And all you're gonna do is try and reach and rotate as far as you can. Pivot in that back leg. You can even, you can even just spread your fingers at the end. And we're rotating that hip as much as we can there, switching the glutes on, rotating this back foot, and we're trying to get as much thoracic rotation as you can. So, Tommy, I want you to advertise the Boxing Science social channels as much as you can to the Jamie. Good, that's it. Draw off your back. So you want to try and... A lot of people just focus on that hip rotation and think that's it, but really you want to increase that range through the thoracic spine there. This is improving hip rotation. As you can see, it's a very, very boxing, boxing specific movement. So that's very slow and controlled. You can add a band to this to increase some strength. So we go side on and all we're gonna do is rotate and press. You also get some serratus anterior activation there as well. And then come back. And at that end range, it's just increasing that kind of that shoulder stability, trying to improve that thoracic rotation, but also I can feel my glute really switching on. If I'm doing it there, I've really got to think about squeezing that glute for increased activation. Once I had the band there, working against that resistance, I'm really having to switch my glute on there to push against that resistance there. So you do around about eight reps each side. And again, just try and get that little bit extra range by just protracting that scapula Again, getting that serratus anterior work in there. We're going to do plate rotations. So we're going to start off hands level. So where the plate is, the center of the plate is online with the sternum, shoulders back and down. And we're rotating to the side, pivoting the rear hip and trying to rotate as fast as you can, but then control, control. Yeah, that's it. And get into nice rhythm, just like a bit like a pendulum. What people can be guilty of here is suboptimal rotation of the hips, maybe going a little bit toe dominant like Tommy was doing there. Going to this position and letting the arms come across rather than being on line with the chest all the time. And also being a little bit stiff and robotic with it. What I want to see is it being a little bit like pendulum. Faster, slow, faster, slow, faster, slow. So it's getting that max, maximal hip rotation and extension but then being able to decelerate at the end range and quick. And it's nice and relaxed rhythm to it. So give that another go, Tommy. Probably put less kind of energy into the shoulders. Shoulders back and down and try and get that rhythm and flow into it. And that's it and slow down at the end. Yeah, good. Full hip rotation, nice. Good. Good, and that's a great exercise to use as an activation drill before boxing and before uh, strength and conditioning sessions, probably towards the latter end of camp. Okay guys, that brings us to the end of the video and we've covered our top 10 rotational exercises for boxing. Hope you've enjoyed it and taken a lot of value and start to integrate some of these exercises into your warm-ups and preparations, uh, whether that's for your strength sessions or boxing sessions as well. Thanks very much for watching. If you've got any questions, please leave them in the comment box below. And make sure you watch our other rotational exercise uh, video, uh, more focus on rotational strength and power. Uh, the videos should just come up here or here, I'm not 
I'm not quite sure. Um, but please click on the video and check that out. And if you're not subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching. See you on the next video.